Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I see the last of us taking seats uh, in the back row. Quick, quick check those with headphones. Can you hear me or are you on a random podcast? Okay, perfect. So my name is Thomas, and, and it's an honor to welcome you on the, the very first session of the day, first day on the future of digital marketing. I'm a founder and CEO of uh, Relay42, which is uh, a CDP specialized in large enterprise customer journeys. So we work for the likes of KLM, Levi's, American Express. And in that role, we're often involved in, in a very big part of a customer journey, starting all the way at the beginning for uh, customer acquisition and all the way to the end on, on customer service. And it is that customer acquisition side of things that we need to talk about today, because this theater is called the future of digital marketing. But I think, well, we're using quite apocalyptic titles here saying, well, the future might look a little bleak if we don't do anything and cookies are, are moving away. So how did we get to that point? If we look at a bit of, of history, we had the offline world. Many, many years ago, before all of the internet, before we all went digital, you would go in a shop and they would sort of know who you are, right? The local bakery said, oh, I know you, you've been here last week, you always order this kind of bread, this is what you eat. And as a customer, we feel valued and we, we like that. We like the personalization, we liked the personal connection. And then some very smart people created the internet and us group here made a mess of it because this is what the early internet looked like on advertising. We had blinking banners, very impersonalized things, pop-up, sort of the, the first parts of the internet were a bit of a, a Wild West cowboy style advertising. And that was because we had no way to do what we had been doing in the offline world for many years. We didn't know how to see, is this the same person again? Can I be relevant to them? Can I target for them? Can I deliver a much more personal message? And that changed with the advent of uh, creating cookies, making browsers smarter, creating data strategies, creating audiences, and creating ways really for us to, instead of having these fleeting touch points across many pop-ups and banners and other parts, to much more understandable journeys. And that is where we are today. We can personalize any touch point. We can understand who a customer is. We can limit how many times they see our ad so they're not bombarded with the same message over time. We can understand that they have bought. We don't need to reach out again. So there's a, there's a lot of personalization and targeting. But all of that today in media is driven by cookies. It's our way to know, is this the same device, is it the same person? So with cookies going away, we're sort of moving back to that Wild West early day, which wasn't in anyone's interest and also wasn't effective for us on the on the marketing side. And this thing has been looming over the market for quite a while. Uh, Google uh, uh, said, I think two, three years ago, we are going to deprecate third party cookies. Apple has done it more gradually and we all said, well, okay, well, we'll have to do something. We'll have to get, get ready for that. Not a lot of people actually started doing something. I see some guilty faces here in the in the audience. But then last week um, at the Mexico in, uh, in Germany, I took this picture because um, this is the vice president of uh, product management on the privacy sandbox side for Google. And he had a very nice slide. You can see his stage was slightly bigger than mine here today, but he had three very key numbers on that thing. He said 100%, and the audience said, well, okay, 100% of the Chrome browsers today have the privacy sandbox technologies enabled. So there really isn't an excuse to not be using them. And then he said, we have 100 days until we start the sunsetting of cookies. And mind you, that's last week. So we have 93 days today, which is a quite gloomy timeline for all of us to, to start moving, which he tried to emphasize by having a zero at the end. He said, what's zero? You have zero days to wait until you start to actually prepare for this and start to work on the solutions and start to pick it up. So. To illustrate a little bit what does that mean, why, why do we need to move right now, we've sort of created this, this timeline uh, from where we are today. You can see that already next month you can start testing with several of the Privacy Sandbox solutions. Then at the end of the year they will start by doing a 1% reduction of the third party cookies. That sounds like a small impact, we could all think well let's, let's push this back three more months, we're, we're okay. But that means you're going to see errors, right? If you're using a solution that has third-party cookies, from the 1st of January onward, it will start triggering errors. It won't work because the cookie isn't there and your ad targeting won't work and you'll lose some visibility. And then, and this is where Google is slightly sort of vague on the exact timeline, they said from Q3 onwards, it will be a phase out. 
what we all don't know is whether that phase out is gonna last a week or a couple months or maybe six to nine months. But it's that kind of kind of time frame in which they'll quickly ramp up that one percent up to a hundred and then the third party cookies are gone. So we need to do something. And at Relay 42, we, we work with many very large uh, brands and we, we done a bit of research and we asked 400 European CMOs and said, where are you guys on this topic? Are you doing something? Are you ready? And we published a research together with, uh, with London Research. We had quite a scary number. 72% of them said, well, the loss of third party cookies is gonna be a major challenge for our business. And I think that means 28% hasn't figured out yet what the problem is gonna be on the marketing side because everyone is gonna be affected by this. But everybody is gonna be affected in very different ways because it means different things for different technology stacks, different things for different strategies. So what I wanted to do today is to go through a bit of those impacts in a very practical way. So what does it mean for you? Assuming, let's say nine out of 10 in this, this group here today are uh, in a marketing function and you would have a target set at some point that says we want to do Simple example, 100,000 transactions, 100,000 conversions. Uh, if you're a small brand, it might be per year. If you're big, it might be per week, but you have to get those 100,000 transactions. What you would typically do is then start at the top of the funnel in a phase that we call a discovery. So you look at how do I get to that point? I need to reach people with programmatic, with targeting. And at this top of the funnel is where there is a big impact because you don't know those people yet. They are unknown to you. You're using uh, audiences from DMP, DMPs, you're using a DSP targeting, you're using all kinds of targeting, all related to, to cookies. And the typical way of doing this is very high volume because we don't know exactly who we need to have, so we need to start, start big. We then bring that down a bit to the ones that are interested, in which case we need to start understanding how do I personalize to these people? How do I drive the right uh, targeting in the funnel? How do I get the right people to the right product? Um, typically add in some, some retargeting to drive more of it uh, and bring them into the conversion phase where we need to understand who is this person exactly? How do I drive the, the messaging? And then more and more we see clients focus and I think that's a very good thing on a phase that's sort of more on the reconnect side. They have bought from us before. How can we reach out to that same customer again? That reconnect side obviously also has, at the moment, a lot of cookies. Yeah? There's a lot of retargeting campaigns, but there are opportunities there. But if you look at this, this kind of setup, and I hope everybody has this kind of thing in mind on their own company and their own, their own roles, you're looking at that 100,000 transactions at a 5% conversion rate, means we need two million people that are actually with a buying intent on the website. That means we probably, if one in five is interested, need 10 million of them that are sort of that interest phase. And to get those 10 million, filtering out the, the relevant and the non-relevant ones, we probably look at around 20 million clicks. Well, take an average click rate and you know how many impressions we're serving on the ad side. That model is not sustainable in a cookie-less world because we're going for very big numbers, knowing a little, knowing some audiences about them and driving them down the funnel. But if we don't know who they are, that number becomes, instead of 20 million, becomes 200 million or 2 billion and we're running out of people on the planet, right? It, do it doesn't work. We can't scale it that way. So. The summary on the, on the current funnel is really that it's, it's leaking on all sides. We're looking at, at targeting based on audiences, we're throwing these people in, and then we let them drop out, but we're okay because we can just throw in more at the top of it, and it's also quite cost effective to drive them in at the top on the, on the media side. But if we go cookie-less, we need a bit of a way forward with this model. We need to understand what can we do to fix those leaks in the funnel, to preferably stay close to those kind of numbers and performance that we had, but with very different technological solutions and probably a differently shaped funnel. Because the way forward, sort of the bad news, is that there is not one magic solution. There is the, the Google Privacy Sandbox initiative. Many providers created alternative IDs. There are all kinds of, of technical solutions. None of them are a one-on-one -on -one replacement to actually identify the same people with the same kind of data. So we cannot just plug in a couple of simple, uh, plug the leaks and, and have a simple technical solution to the, to the problem. That means, on the good hand, we need to start fixing that leaking funnel, but we can do so today. Both the Privacy Sandbox initiatives are live today to be tried, but there are also many other changes in strategy that we can start testing today. Because if we see that the uh, number of uh, people in different phases of our funnel is changing, or we see that the accuracy on certain phases is changing, we can solve that. 
if we have uh, 20 million people at the top, we see that reduced to 15 million because of lesser targeting, lesser interest, or more expensive media. If we pick up the conversion rates in the lower phases of the funnel by doing better personalization, better targeting, we can drive more. And this sort of strategy change, rethinking your funnel, you can start today. And I would really urge everyone to do that today. Because if you start it today in the next couple of months, you can also still compare to the current situation. You can try this on your own pace, on a part of your traffic, start to learn, start to drive a data strategy that, that gets you the results back and still understand where it fits because also measurement is gonna be affected by a lack of, uh, of third party cookies. So if we step through that funnel and we look at the, the available solutions in the market today and the changes to be made on, on going cookie-less, let's start at the top. We're looking at the uh, discovery side of the funnel. We're currently doing DMP audiences, we're currently doing me mostly programmatic media, getting, getting volume and getting, uh, getting data. That part has a lot of alternative solutions. First of all, we have the Google Topics API, which is one of the Privacy Sandbox uh, initiatives. It's very similar to audience targeting. It's built into the customer's browser or device, and it will remember the topics that they're interested in. That sounds amazing, right? When, when we saw the headlines, we thought, oh, great, this, this is a big part of our solution. The downside of the Topics API is if you look at a typical DMP kind of setup or audience buying setup, you can choose from 30, 40, up to 70,000 different audiences. So you have very high granularity, very good targeting. I see some people nodding and I know where this, where this goes. The Topics API today has 471 topics. And that includes things like uh, pet food for cats, for specific types of cats. So the chances that your exact product in the right kind of way is in those topics is quite low. These will be very generic sort of groups. The other challenge on the topics side is that it will have three topics per device or person that they currently have active, whereas your, your window on DMP audiences is much, much longer. So the expectation on topics is both you will have less granularity on targeting, meaning you'll have less accuracy, meaning you need more media, and you'll have less volume because it won't be as many topics per person. So the, the expectation is that the discovery side of your funnel will start to shrink and we have to be more effective in the lower parts. Then we see a big role for uh, lookalike audiences because you know which people are very active, you know which ones of your current customer base are working, you're hopefully already building a big first party data set and you can use it to figure out and match which other people in the, on the, the open, open web are interested. Again, this is lower volume than typical audience, so these things have to augment and stuff. Uh, you have to add them all together, you do topics, you do lookalikes. And then we also look at uh, contextual advertising uh, and in a very similar way at second party data. Because a lot of these talks today are, are about how do I get more first party data? But you can almost consider these second party data setups as someone else's first party data. We're all in the same boat here. And a good example in our customer base is one of our larger airline clients, collaborates with a hotel group, to exchange their first party data with each other, saying, hey, these audiences are relevant for the both of us. But these become much more deliberate decisions, much more targeted, there's more technology involved than simply buying an audience of, of interested people. All of these together can bring you back up to some volume, but not all volume. So on the next step, we have to look at how do we get that interest side working. There we have a bit of the, the good news. Uh, we've been running quite a few experiments on what is now called a Google Protected Audience. It used to be called Pledge, which is the uh, technological solution for retargeting, which essentially turns the whole retargeting technology upside down. And I won't bore you with all the details on how it works, because the end result is the same. You have a person on their website, you have them in your data set, they're anonymous, we make sure their device knows who we are, and how to reconnect, how to run the ad auctions, and you are able to retarget. So the retargeting side of things is, is fixed quite well. Small limitations, like a minimum audience size of 1,000 people, uh, a maximum window of 30 days duration, but those will be small impacts. So the, the pledge API or the protected audience is a very, very big one. But it's important to realize that Google has also said that they will not be implementing it. So DV360 will not be running the protected audience API you will have to work with all the other ad tech vendors to do so. So that means making sure you get the connection set up, get the technology implemented before the end of the year. But that does cover a big part of our interest part of the funnel. And then the other one is looking at the web personalization side. Because if we start with a lower volume of people at the top, we need to make sure that we get better at personalizing and driving more performance uh, lower down the funnel. And you might think, well, yeah, but personalization is typically cookie-based, but those cookies are not affected. It's a common misconception that the personalization cookies on your website 
to be effective. It's all about the third party cookies that Google is blocking. So you can actually do personalization, you can do uh, much better targeting on that interest phase to drive a higher conversion rate and probably sort of win back a big part of that performance lost in the volumes at the, at the upper funnel. Then going down to conversion, it becomes much more important to understand that you need to own the first party data on that side. Because that first party data is what feeds the lookalike audiences at the top. It's what allows you to measure the performance on those protected audience API campaigns, which all becomes a little bit harder than it is on, on traditional solutions. So you need to make sure at the bottom of your funnel, you're capturing identifiers, you're building a relationship with that customer, you're driving data, and you're keeping and storing that data in your CDP or other solution. And then you need to think about how do we drive more omni-channel personalization? Because there is a big win here, again, in increasing performance in the conversion stage. If you up that by a couple percent, you're taking out, let's say, five million required people at the top of your funnel. So you drive the same performance with, uh, with, its, with similar numbers of media. And then finally, we see an increasing role for that reconnect stage. And that is all about using that first party data to create a long-term interaction with the customer, to pick it back up, to keep interacting with them over time and to look at what we call ID graph and clean room kind of solutions. Because if you have that first party data, as I just said on, on second party exchange with other companies, you need to make sure you can match it with others in a way that goes without cookies, because you're gonna be emphasizing more and more on this bottom part of the funnel, reusing your customer base and driving it. All of which means that you need to make sure you have a strategy there, you own that data and you control that, that data and control that part of the, of the funnel. So, if we summarize that in a, in a conclusion, because it's, it's a little bit easy to go here and say, well, you have zero days, <laughs> you have zero days to start preparing and you have 93 days until the end, but that, that doesn't really help you, right? But what, what do you need to do now? What is the, the plan that you need to roll out for, for your strategy and your channels? Well, I like to split that a bit in, in a few time frames. What can you do today? I think today, and I hope this sort of very high level summary has inspired you enough to start thinking about what is my current funnel? How is my emphasis on that top of funnel versus own data versus performance in the lower parts? Are you currently getting the most out of that data? Are you capturing it? Understand where are the opportunities to change it? Not with cookie alternatives, but just optimizing your funnel and preparing for that, that future world, which is more a thought exercise. We're all nearing 2024 planning, so this is the moment to think about what will that look like for us? And where do you make shifts in investments on uh, very top of funnel acquisition versus personalization versus owning data and, and a good data infrastructure? Then the next step is to start investing in that strategy and start to understand how do I get that data in? And you can do so today because none of those technologies are new. They exist, you can connect with it. You typically have that data, but it's currently not stored or it's currently not captured. So you can start setting up the infrastructure, you can start connecting it start making sure you, you have it and you can use it to measure. So you have some baseline measures on what these analytics results look like versus your current cookie-based ones. Because you have essentially three months to do that very well and then know what your metrics look like and how you compare them to the future. And then, and I've put it as next month, but obviously if you're very, very quick, you're very welcome to start immediately because these things are live uh, starting 1st of October is to start experiments with those cookie alternatives. So start to plug in the uh, protected audience API. Start testing with topics and do a split comparison to your current audience targeting to look at how much is the lost performance for you? How much performance on retargeting can you get from Fletch and from the protected audience API? As well as looking at the, the ID graph and second party setups because there is uh, typically more technology and more of a partnership building involved. So you need some time to, to start doing that. Uh, hopefully to be ready at the, at the end of the year. And of course, this is a very high level uh, story. I had to fit it into uh, 20 minutes. Um, but what we have done is actually create both uh, a sort of short assessment paper to help you understand these steps in a bit more detail and also give you some pointers on where do you find those technologies, what do you need. Uh, and uh, we wrote uh, a bit of a larger ebook in case you, you really want to deep dive into this or you have someone in your team that has to, to look at what does that world look like and what is the vision on how these funnels need to operate and how they, uh, how they work. So if you would like to get into a bit more, uh, more detail, we have our stand um, right behind here where a few of my engineering colleagues are there to explain the actual details of how these things work to help you understand that, that assessment. So feel free to step, uh, step by. My colleague is at the exit here to, to point you in a direction and has a handout with, with a summary of this, uh, of this uh, setup. And if you have any questions, uh, step by. Thank you very much.